is so beautiful. And it's kind of really the centerpiece of my talk today. Is there any way we can turn off this mic here? I think I got it. Okay, wonderful. Do you mind if I move around a little bit? Love to get caught up in God energy. That's okay with you? Tony does it every Sunday. He does. Good. My, my wife calls it nervous pacing, but it's actually purposeful. Um, so the healing power of Ho'oponopono, is it okay if I call it Ho'oponopono? It's just, it rolls off the tongue much better than Ho'oponopono. Is that okay? Do I have your permission to mispronounce it? It just, it's much easier to understand. So Ho'oponopono, I'm so excited to talk to you about it. It's the ancient Hawaiian art of healing and forgiveness and reconciliation. And we in unity are always looking for metaphysical tools and strategies, are we not, to raise our vibration, to connect more with the source within, to manifest more, to let go and to let God, to clean up our consciousness. And of all the tools and strategies that I have used and employed, outside of probably affirmative prayer and meditation, Ho'oponopono is one of the most powerful ones I've, I've been able to apply in my own life, and I'm so excited to share it with you. So what is this Ho'oponopono? Well, Ho'o in ancient Hawaiian means to cause or to create, and Ponopono means perfection. So this spiritual process that I'm going to teach you is about creating perfection. So let's go further. It's really about recognizing the perfection that is already within you. I love what Rumi said, he said, you know, we are a singular drop in this ocean. That singular drop, which is us, we're this unique, amazing spiritual expression of the ocean, which is God. We are part of God, and yet all of the ocean is part of us. Would you agree with that idea? So, the, so if we're part of God and God is all of us, there's nowhere that God is not. And so that perfection, because God is perfect and God can't create anything that's imperfect, that perfection is within us at all times. And I think one of the challenges we have here on planet Earth is actually experiencing that. I say, I struggle with this. All right, so I'm going to do a little experiment to see if anyone else in this crowd struggles with me. All right? So I'm going to ask you three simple questions. Number one, raise your hand if you have a hard time sometimes on planet Earth seeing yourself as perfect. Raise your hand. <laughs> Okay, that's pretty much the home room. Okay. Uh, raise your hand, especially I'd say in the last year and a half, two years, that you're having a really hard time seeing the world as a perfect place to be in right now. Raise your hand. Okay. And raise your hand if you have a really hard time seeing the perfection of other people 24 7. Okay. Oh, good. I'm not the only one that struggles with that. Okay, great. So, but this is the journey that we're on. We have this perfection within us. We have God flowing through us. We say all the time in unity, do we not, that we are God, that we are the Christ consciousness, that we're connected to this divine mind, and yet there are some times in our lives that we get disconnected from the source within. Okay, and Ho'oponopono is a very simple way of kind of reconnecting us to that source. So the ancient Hawaiians, what they believe is that um, the challenges that we have in our lives are embedded in our subconscious and that we have painful memories or programs that are within us subconsciously that are getting in the way of ex experiencing the divinity within us. So these painful memories, let's, let's take for example our own lives. We've had some challenging things happen in our lives and we've observed those challenging things happen and we've had some um, difficult thoughts about the things that we're observing and some of those dark thoughts have led to uh, negative thoughts that we've thought over and over, and they, those become our limiting beliefs. Now, there's a myriad of ways to kind of remove those re re uh, limiting beliefs from our subconscious. One of the ways is through tapping and EFT, and one of your speakers in a few weeks is Lori Lamont. She's actually going to be talking about tapping. Um, you can be rich, richly blessed with uh, the, her word and what she has to share. You know, we've got, we've got Reiki, we've got affirmative prayer, we've got meditations. There's a lot of ways to kind of release that which is not lo no longer serving us. But we also have painful memories from our ancestors. Now, this one was kind of an interesting concept for me to kind of take in, that we have this DNA and it's been passed through our ancestors, and we're carrying some of their painful thoughts and memories as well. 
But that was helpful for me to understand because there's was, there was been times, you know, I'm doing, my, I'm doing my vision boards and I'm doing my affirmations and I'm praying and I'm meditating, I'm seeing it right and all these things. And still occasionally a manifestation doesn't go the way I want it to or something happens in my life that I say, wow, I didn't really think I was going to manifest that. Sometimes there's some things in our, within ourselves subconsciously that we don't even know it's there. That's why it's subconscious, right? That we need to gently release and we can't see them. Now, when I explain this to you, I don't want you to think, oh, wow, so I'm going to do all this great spiritual work and there's always going to be this force working against me. That's not what I'm saying to you. What I'm saying to you is there's some things that we can release from ourselves subconsciously um, that show up in our earthly experience. You know, the, the earthly experience that we're receiving, the conditions in our lives, the circumstances, are a direct reflection of the deepest held thoughts and beliefs that you have about it. We could look at, at your, your uh, relationship or your beliefs about your abundance and flow, uh, but your, your beliefs about your health, your beliefs about your relationships, your beliefs about your business. And the earth, it, it, what's happening on planet Earth is it, it, the experience that you're having in your own personal life is a direct reflection of the deepest held thoughts you're having about it. So we want to be in the business, of course, of believing in the right direction, do we not? As your faith is, it will be done unto you as you believe you receive. We've heard these terms before. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have things in our subconscious that need to be released. So that's what Ho'oponopono is. And through this process of saying four simple phrases, I'm going to share them with you now. I'll explain them more later. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And thank you. Through this, we get back to a state called zero. The Buddhist would call it void. And there's a great book. If you, if you resonate with what I share with you today, there's a great book called Zero Limits, uh, The Secret Hawaiian System for Health, Wealth, Peace, and More. It's written by Dr. Joe Vitale and Dr. Hu Len. And what, what getting back to zero really means is this idea of getting to a place of no thought. Think about where you are when you have a meditation. You're not experiencing any thought. You're just connecting to the divine within you. Think about when you go to the beach and you pick up a, a handful of sand and you just look at God's majesty, looking at all the different colors and shapes and sizes of the sand. Or, or when you're walking through the woods and you, you really stare at the tree intently for the first time. It's, it's like it's you and this divine and there's nothing else. Have anyone experienced those kind of moments? And it's amazing, right? And you never want to turn that off. You just, I, just, I, I wish I could be in that place all the time. Mm -hmm. And so that's what getting back to zero means, is letting go of any thoughts um, in, in your consciousness that, that come up that do not serve you. So you know, how I found out about this is an incredible story. Dr. Hu Len, who is a co-author of this book, he's this psychologist. And he goes in and starts working at this mental health facility for the criminally insane in Hawaii. And so imagine, he comes in there, and within a three-month period of time, he takes individuals who are heavily medicated, uh, heavily restrained because they're a danger to themselves and they're a danger to one another. He takes individuals who have significant mental health challenges, and he heals his entire caseload. And all of a sudden, their medications go down their level of violent acts go way down. Their uh, ability to experience peace and happiness goes way up. And in fact, they didn't need him anymore. And so imagine being a staff member at this location. So here comes this hotshot psychologist, and he walks in, and he, within a three-month period of time, heals everybody, and he never physically meets with him. You know, imagine that. Imagine being a worker there and watching this guy walk in each and every day, grab his cup of coffee, go in his office, shut the door, and all of his patients get healed. How would you feel as a staff member working alongside when you're grinding it out, you're having all these therapeutic sessions, you're working super duper hard, and your clients aren't moving? How would you feel? Intrigued. I'm sorry? Intrigued. Intrigued. I think I'd feel angry and frustrated first. <laughs> That, that's a very higher level thought. Yeah, and I think this is where, at the beginning, I think you're like, who's this guy? He's not even doing any work. And then I got, they got to the place that you mentioned where they got intrigued, like, what is happening? And, and he said, I'll tell you. I'll show you how to do it. And so you want to know what he did? Yeah. He basically came in every day, and he read the person's chart. 
and he looked at their crime and he observed himself thinking about their crime and how it made him th think about the situation, but more importantly, how it made him feel. So he'd read this heinous crime and he'd observe the reactions he was having thinking about this person and how this crime made him feel inside of him. And what he did was he didn't heal the other person. He healed and he cleaned up his thoughts about the other individual. So he shared this technique with the rest of his team. They closed the ward down in a two-year period of time because they were too successful. There was nobody else to serve. They closed the ward down. The healing power of Ho'oponopono. That's, that's amazing, right? It's kind of hard to believe. So when my wife told me a little bit about this story, I said, I've got to read this book and see what's the magic sauce here. And so it's based on some very simple spiritual principles. The first principle is that we're all one. Okay? Now, I don't know about you, I, I kind of get this concept. We talk a lot about it a lot in unity, this idea that there's no separation between you and me, that we're one and the one body. And I, and I can kind of grasp on the concept that we're going to go back into that oneness, right? We're going to be part of that ocean again, and we're going to experience all of it at once. I think that's easier to grasp than thinking about being one on planet Earth. Okay? But if we're all one, if I clean up my thoughts about you, I'm at the same time cleaning up my thoughts about myself. Because the, the, the thoughts I'm holding about you, you're like a mirror to me, and I'm like a mirror to you. So that is a great, great spiritual truth, that the more that we clean up thoughts about other people, the more we're able to see, clean up thoughts about ourselves. And I'm going to go further. The more that we clean up thoughts about the people, we're actually able to see them for who they truly are which is this beautiful, amazing, wonderful child of God. What was the last couple of words in that beautiful song you just sang? I see a miracle before me. I see you for who you truly are. Something along those lines? My, my, my brand new baby girl, she's a miracle. I saw God today. My brand new baby is a, a girl's a miracle. I saw God today. And that's what Hope Porn on Porn allows you to do is like every moment you're seeing God. You're seeing God. And it doesn't matter how the person is physically showing up you can choose to see God in them in that moment. It's beautiful. So the second spiritual principle that I want to share with you here, and this one kind of blew my mind, this idea that we are 100% responsible for what shows up in our lives. So we in unity believe that we create our own lives, we create our own destiny. Do you guys resonate with that? That thoughts create things, that thoughts in divine mind create, produce their own kind? We talk about that all the time. And yet I, I stand here and I, I, I struggle with this idea that I'm creating the eradication of the ozone layer. That I'm creating some of these policies that I really don't resonate with in our government level. It gets hard for me to grapple with, I create my own destiny, my own reality, and yet all these other things are happening in my world that I do not like. It's, it's hard for us to think that we're 100% responsible. But I love what Dr. Hugh Len says. He says, have you ever noticed that when there's a problem, you're always there? <laughs> think about it. So if we're 100% responsible, let's break down the word responsible. You're response-able. You're able to respond. So there are things that I think we would agree that we're all not consciously thinking about eradicating the ozone layer or you know, creating some of these things in this earth that we don't like. But could we hold on to the concept that maybe that we're doing it collectively in our collective consciousness? Would that be fair? And we're part of that. So when things come into our earthly existence that we do not like, it's an opportunity for us to bless them. It's an opportunity for us to forgive them. It's an opportunity for us to heal them. And that's what Ho'oponopono does. Because what, what, it, what it does is it basically says, I choose to see the divine in whatever this thing is. I don't understand why it's come into my existence. I don't understand why that guy cut me off on the highway. I don't understand why my, my business proposal didn't go through. I don't understand why people are showing up in a difficult way in my life. But I absolutely have control over one thing. I can choose to see the divinity in them. I can choose to see the divinity in the situation. Okay? And the final principle that this is built on, and this one also was really hard for me at first, 
that it's more powerful to focus on being inspired and allowing as opposed to intending. Now, I really grapple with this too, because what, 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 if you talk to Dr. Hugh Lennon, if he was up here, he'd say just clean, 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 clean. Just keep practicing these techniques. Just clean something you don't like, clean it. Something you don't like, clean it. A person you don't like, clean it. That's all he would say. I'm a coach, and I work with people all the time on creating intentions and turning them into a burning desire and letting go of what you perceive to be the resistance in your mind to achieving them and, and assertively going for them. So this idea of letting go of intentions and just allowing, kind of hard to do. Kind of contrary to what we're, we're taught sometimes in unity. But I think what, 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 we're, what, what, it, what it's calling us to do is that we're already, we already have the perfection within us. We are capable of taking a mountain and, and, and casting it into the sea. Right? Jesus said that we would do more, greater, greater things than he. We have that power within us, but I think we're, t we're turned off to the power by some of the thoughts that we hold and some of the beliefs that we hold about it. Okay? And so, so this idea of getting into the state of well-being and allowance and just being inspired, like in other words, there's nothing more important than you just connecting to source and connecting to source and connecting to source and connecting to source, and then things begin to unfold in perfect divine order. Who here is connected to source? You get things rocking and rolling for a while, and then you take the foot off the pedal. Who does that? And then the struggle comes, and then you say, well, you know what, I need to get reconnected to source. <laughs> and then things start moving again, and then you take off the foot, foot off the pedal. That's kind of this earthly experience. So would you guys like to learn the technique and what it means? All right, I'm wondering if you guys can trust me. I'm wondering if we could all close our eyes just for a brief moment. All right, and I want you to think about somebody right now that's causing difficulty in your life. You have some kind of emotional discord or challenging thoughts when you think about this individual. All right, I'm going to give you five seconds to just come up with anyone. It doesn't matter who it is. It could be the mailman. It could be your mom. It could be a spouse. Anybody. All right, now keep your eyes closed. And I want you to repeat these four phrases to me. And, and when you repeat them, I want you to think of the essence of this person being with you. And I, to the extent that you can, I want you to feel the words that you're saying to this individual and really mean them. Even if this person's caused you a lot of pain. Ready? Repeat after me. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Again, think about this person's essence. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. All right, let's open your eyes. Thank you for trusting me. Did anyone experience even the tiniest of little vibrational shifts just from saying those words to this difficult individual? Yeah? Now imagine if you said it over and over and over again how you would feel. Now, Dr. Hugh Len would say, look, we're just about cleaning. It doesn't matter what the words mean. Just say them. But I, I want to try to give a spiritual interpretation if you'll allow me permission to try. I love you. Like, love is the natural state between you and I. It's the natural state between you and whoever that person is. That's, love is all that exists. So that's our natural state. I'm sorry. I'm sorry because in this moment, the way that you're showing up, I'm not seeing you for who you truly are, which is a beautiful, amazing child of God. It doesn't matter how you're behaving. I'm sorry. In this moment, I'm not seeing the God in you. Please forgive me. You know what? I want to take off this heavy coat of guilt and dark energy and, 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 and challenging thoughts that I'm having about you because you know what? It feels heavy and it doesn't feel good. I want to take it off. And so I ask for your forgiveness for thinking about you in this way. But thank you. Thank you because you have shown me that I need to clean up my thoughts about you. Okay, so notice what I'm doing there. I'm not saying that they need to change. I'm saying thank you so much. You've shown up in a way that I realize, wow, I've got something in my consciousness that I need to clean up about you. 
I'm not seeing you truly for who you are right now. Very, very powerful. So let me give you a couple of quick applications. Anyone here um, have a core value of harmony like you? You're all about harmony and you need to be in harmony. Am I the only person that... Harmony? Yes, harmony? You? Okay. So for those of you who really, really value harmony, when you're disharmonious, when you get into discord with another person, how do you feel? Awful. Right? Awful. Like completely out of alignment. So my wife and I, we couldn't be more polar opposites. And we get into arguments from time to time, as every couple does. And she has no problem being out of harmony. Like when she's upset, she needs to go, she needs to go do her own thing and go off in the other room and be by herself and send her that way. And it's all good. I, I validate that. That's, that's totally that's who she is. And, but for me, the guy who needs harmony, I want instantaneous healing. Let's bring it on. Let's talk about it now. Let's get this thing resolved right here, right now. And she won't allow it, and I get it. She needs to do her own thing. But because she wouldn't allow me to have that harmony, I'd be out of alignment for the rest of the day. I, I, I couldn't think straight in my business. I couldn't parent well. <laughs> it was hard to, to go to the softball games with the guys and be normal. It's because I was constantly thinking about the, you know, the fact that my wife is upset with me, and I, I can't get resolution to this thing. So what I started doing is I started practicing Ho'oponopono. Uh, those, I was saying those four phrases. And I'm not looking at my wife like, change, change, change. Okay? I'm looking at my wife like, I am so sorry that I am seeing you in a way that's not correct right now. And by saying those four simple phrases ten times, you know what? I'm in harmony with me, which is really the only thing I have control over anyway. And if I'm, so now I can go to bed and we could still be upset. It's all good. When my wife is ready to discuss this, we'll discuss it, and we'll get it healed. Is that helpful? I have a teenage daughter, and I have a son. He's, he's eight, but I'll talk about my teenage daughter. She's 15. She gives me many opportunities to practice Ho'oponopono. <laughs> and Chris, you're, you're, you're in the room? Let me tell you, my friend, we as parents give you a lot of opportunities to practice Ho'oponopono. Would you agree? So it goes both ways. And I tell my daughter all the time, I said, look, I, I realize that <laughs> this whole parenting thing, I'm learning. There's no book on this. You're a teen. When you're upset with dad, after you finish writing in your diary, just go practice Ho'oponopono on me, you know, 10, 15 times. We're in more alignment. And it helps me to understand that she's this beautiful, amazing teenager that's growing up in a very, very difficult world and trying to navigate who am I and how do I, how do I make this life work? And, and she's, but I don't have to get caught up in her, her drama and agenda anymore because I just practice this and I can see her for who she, who she truly is. I do this also with my business. Anyone here run their own business? Yeah? Okay. Ever, ever had the internal gut feeling like I need this contract to get over the line, I need this client to get over the line, I need the sale to go through, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? I've, I hope pono pono that over and over and over. And I'll tell you why. Because when we, as business owners, when we come from this place of necessity for something to go our way, what are we vibrationally saying? That it isn't ours. We're vibrationally coming from a place of fear and doubt and worry. We're not letting go and letting God in that moment. So I practice hope pono pono on the situation. And I just know that things are going to unfold in my business in perfect divine order. And it's, and it's awesome. And sometimes, you know, that, sometimes that client does not work with me. They weren't meant to. Sometimes that contract doesn't get over the line. It wasn't supposed to. But now, and now I'm at peace with it, right? And I can, be, I can be an inspired business owner all the time. Because I'm not, I'm not going through the emotional roller coaster of observing my business growing and feeling good and then noticing that my business is struggling, having challenges. Does this make sense? So you can apply this in every aspect of your life. But those four simple phrases, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I will tell you, it has absolutely changed me. It's a system that you can get into alignment like this. Because when someone comes in, they're acting a particular way, you start having challenging thoughts about them, 
I don't know about you guys. For me, it starts so innocently with one negative thought, and then there's another negative thought, and then there's another negative thought, and I don't know, I just go downward. So this is a great way for you to stay aligned, stay in a high vibration, and see that person for who they truly are. See that situation for true, what it truly is. It's a beautiful, divine creation, and everything is unfolding in perfect divine order. Thank you so much for your time, and may God richly bless all of you. You have been watching the message from our Sunday celebration service here at Unity on Cape Cod, providing a positive path for spiritual living. Please join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. at 147 Walton Ave, Hyannis, Mass. And visit us online at www.unityoncapecod.org.